Hello, assalamu alaikum, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to the second day of the uh, SUG. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself, my name is Zen Zidane, the head of the SUG, and uh, welcome to the Region Full of Opportunities panel. I'd like to introduce uh, Lynn Tahini, who's going to be moderating this talk. Lynn? Thank you. Hello everyone, assalamu alaikum. Um, bonjour à tous. It is my pleasure to be here with you today and to see such a large number of attendees. That definitely means that our subject matter is relevant and topical, and I hope it will meet your expectations. We will start with uh, two movies. The first one is from Niam, and the second one about a uh, film Alola. Thank you. Action. Let's welcome our panel to the stage with a nice round of applause. It is now my pleasure to introduce our panelists. George David, Charlene DeLeon Jones, Charlene. 
Charlien, Wayne Borg, <laughs> Rula Nasser, <laughs> and Jennifer Haddad. So there are countless uh, prospects right here in the Arab region, which is, which is full of talents. And this panel will focus on how to make the most out of these local and regional opportunities, despite the challenges. How to find the best talents, location, support, financing, sales agents, and more. The region has a lot to give to the talent and creative. So our title would be for today, a region full of opportunities. I will start with Wayne Borg. Uh, you are an accomplished international executive with unparalleled 20 plus years of experience in regional and international leadership roles in the media and creative industries. You have led key divisions of major iconic international media and entertainment businesses and driven broad brush strategic and policy initiatives for governments in the media, cultural and creative industry sector. You're the director of media industries, entertainment and culture at NEOM, set to be the city of future. I'm gonna now introduce Charlene. Um, just one second because they have uh, very interesting and long bios, so I have to find them in my... <laughs> so just one second, okay. So Charlene, uh, you're the executive director at Film Al Ola, responsible for guiding and scaling the Royal Commission for Al Ola's film agency. Among your responsibilities, the driving of the strategy to build a sustainable film ecosystem and positioning Al Ola as the global film destination. You're also, you also lead the development of the new state-of-the-art film and TV studios, and you're a passionate advocate of creating sustained economic impact and skill development. Our third panelist for today is George David. So George, you're a film and television consultant focusing on production, public policy, talent development, PR, and international film commissions. With over 26 years of experience in the entertainment business, you are currently consulting on public and private, private sectors initiatives in the MENA region and all over the world. And you are head of the Royal Commission in Jordan, Royal Film Commission, for more than 12 years. Our third panelist is producer uh, Rula Nasser. You're a Jordanian producer and the founder of the Imaginarium Films in 2010. Through it, you produced many award-winning projects, among them The Last Friday, Waiting for P.O. Box, and My Love Awaits Me by the Sea. Jennifer, you're um, our youngest panelist. <laughs> After completing your studies and specializing in documentary filmmaking, you have worked for several years as a producer for the MENA region with the J. Walter Thompson Advertising Agency. You have a regional experience in casting production and have worked on many film productions and won the best casting director at the Lebanese Film Awards for Nadine Zlabaki Capernaum. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, Wayne, I will start with you. Okay. Well, we have all watched the movie. <laughs> now read the book. <laughs> so, we, uh, <laughs> so we know that Neom is said to be the city of the future. Uh, what's, what's the offer for cinema? Um, I think as this panel's title suggests, you know, Neom is very much about a regional proposition uh, from a media industry's perspective. As part of the broader Neom offering, which is about to create a global centre here in the kingdom, a semi-autonomous state uh, up on the northwest coast of uh, the kingdom, uh, on the Gulf of Aqaba. You know, to give you some context, we're going to be a jurisdiction of about 26,500 square kilometres, so the size of Belgium, to put some context around that. And uh, it's going to be a significant global capital, and, and one of the, the key industries that we're going to be focusing on now is the media industries uh, because it's recognized globally today in most advanced economies the role it plays in generating economic activity, jobs, and really sort of creating, um, you know, advanced manufacturing in many ways, uh, you know, of the future. So, you know, from a media industry's perspective, 
our role is really to sort of capture uh, and harness the, the ecosystem that this region you know, deserves and needs. I think you're seeing the vibrancy of, of the film festival, which we're very proud to be associated with, um, and the, you know, the amount of activity you know, in terms of filmmakers, and importantly, you know, as a lot of the people in the room today, industry suggests that there's a great deal of interest here in the industry. And when you look at this marketplace as a 500 million person marketplace, it's underserved when it comes to the screen sector. Uh, and in large part, our role is to ensure we put in place the right infrastructure to support that industry at a regional level and create a true regional hub for content creation. Uh, you know, when we talk about the screen sector, it's right across the value chain. Uh, and, and it's focused on screen and it's all its forms. You know, we're doing gaming and digital publishing and, and we're seeing the convergence that's happening in that space. So today, you know, we've got a, a you know, very comprehensive offering um, you know, we've already got four sound stages up and running, two and a half thousand square metres each. We've got six more to come in the course of the next six months. We've got a very attractive and globally competitive production incentive. You know, it's 40% plus that's applicable to not just feature film, but television, documentary scripted, reality, uh, as well as, um, you know, gaming sector. So, you know, and we've got a great team who are from industry, for industry, and we've got an incredible depth of, of crew. You know, we've got a crew depth right now of about three. Um, and we are well and truly open for business. You know, we've had over 25, actually 26 productions um, over the course of the last 18 months. And we're certainly demonstrating that capability and capacity uh, to really provide a, a true world-class, you know, industry hub uh, for not only just productions, but for industry, for industry learning, for incubation and startup. So it can become a real focal point, not only from an infrastructure standpoint, but how we you know, can get a, create that focal point for industry and it, more importantly for talent, talent development and create the, the environment for collaboration in a broad sense. I'll yeah. shut up. <laughs> We'll get back to more details. Uh, I, I would like to ask you, Charlene, uh, we, uh, we all know and we saw it also, we saw the views on, on, the, on TV. Um, Alola is known to be um, a top cultural, or the top cultural destination in KSA today. Um, but not everyone knows that you're uh, now creating this film and uh, uh, to support uh, the cinema industry. Can you tell us more about it? So as a cultural destination, you have a natural hub for arts, for film, and I guess screen sector is at the very center of storytelling. So you have an environment where you already have a really vibrant space. I know many people in the room over the last a um, couple of days have been keeping my marketing director asking to come and visit, right? So we've got this environment where it's breathtakingly beautiful as you would have seen. What you wouldn't have seen or you wouldn't have heard is the impact of the silence of some of those places and what that does for inspiration from a creative perspective and also what it means to bring creatives, to bring technical specialists together in one place. Now, from a film perspective or from a screen sector perspective, we've been really focused on what does it mean to make that experience familiar, one, and predictable, two, and affordable, three, right? Very so, important. So when you have those types of environments where there's lots of focus on tourism and wellness and heritage and arts and there's always something happening across the year on the weekend, you potentially have quite an expensive place to film. So one of the first things we've done to make it easier is to ensure we have dedicated crew accommodation. We have um, 150 self-contained crew ac accommodation at the moment. Um, really well done. Also created a communal space. And we'll have another 150 online over the course of the next year, together with pools and restaurants and so forth. So from a cultural heritage film perspective, we're already looking at how do you place make, how do you create communities of um, content makers. In addition to that, we are a spectacular location, but we're interested in the full life cycle of any kind of production. So not just hosting, but also being somewhere where post-production happens, where studio work happens, where you may even have work around animation, for example. So we really are wanting our location to be somewhere of inspiration and also somewhere where we have economic return, right? Someone said to me recently, 
one of the quickest ways to sort of lose money is to invest in the film industry. So we pay a lot of attention to where we're making investments, what does that mean for the economic impact to our local community and the community beyond. Where we're investing in training, that's great for us to invest training at a local level, but how we train has a knock-on effect for NEOM, has a knock-on effect for the region generally. If one of the key ways we're going to develop the film industry is have a crew base here, and a crew base that is local, and a crew base that five, ten years from now are some of the leading heads of departments, not just here in the region, but also overseas in Hollywood, in South Korea, and so forth. So with regards from a production expect um, perspective, we're looking at every step, so even before you arrive, when you send your scripts, we will say, right, these are the potential locations you could go. We'll look at your budget. A lot of people aren't used to filming in Saudi, may never have come to Alula. Does your budget make sense? Is it too high? Is it too low? Have you missed things? Are there potential businesses we can put you in contact with to support? Um, our rebate is via the Saudi Film Commission. We can give them a call if they're taking a little while to get back to you in the WhatsApp. And additionally, at a local level, we have um, the ability to cash incentivize and also incentivize in kind. But do that in a way which is really going to push your production forward. So I can talk on and on. And I think Wayne and I have that. <laughs> have yeah, that yeah, in we have. <laughs> so, but just, I guess, our perspective is how do we make that experience for you as you know great as pleasurable as possible and for each production coming in how do we learn from that so a year from now that experience is even better again so you're both looking forward to becoming regional hubs um, talking about um, KSA was with you George you have an extensive experience throughout the, the whole uh, Arab region in, in the cinema industry uh, are there other uh, areas in, in the Arab world where we could also talk about hub sure, yes um, for sure um, now I, I, I want to start by uh, differentiating the types of production because um, many locations attract what they call tentpole productions a big Hollywood and, and even medium-sized Hollywood projects to come and film in the location uh, with an aim to uh, increase economic impact, uh, uh, create jobs, uh, uh, you know, and soft power, you know, film tourism, etc. But there's also, and we're seeing, and, and it's very important to differentiate, and now we're seeing more of it, there's interest to produce local language content, Arabic language content, um, in the region from company, international companies. Um, and, and we see the emergence of what they call the hybrid international production, where you have the company is international, yet it's producing content uh, that's local and in the location. And I think that's where the importance of a hub comes in. Um, you know, and, and I think the, the, the hubs that have been going on for several years, of course, Chronologically, Morocco is, is, is very well known for its. Uh, they have an incentive. In yeah, they they've had, they have incentives. They have that an incentive, twenty percent rebate. They have a uh, crew. Um, they have two studios. Uh, um, they are also they are also five hours closer, sometimes more than everyone else. For that 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 makes them more accessible in terms of transport costs. Um, then there's the, 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 the country I represented for a couple of years, uh, Jordan, of course. Jordan has emerged as a production hub in terms of uh, crew. Uh, at that time, we focused on the human resources, with training programs. Uh, so the crew is, is a very important aspect of the hub, of course. Um, I, I know there are stages uh, uh, on the horizon, sound stages, in the next year or so. Um, and of course, uh, 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 an incentive which was launched around four or five years ago. Uh, there's also a local fund in Jordan. Um, and of course, you have also Abu Dhabi, uh, which has been in the playground for a couple of years now. Uh, I know since 2019, they started planning a studio facility. Uh, they, they've they have a 30% cash rebate, um, and they're also working on uh, crew initiatives, also, uh, you know, workforce development initiatives. 
Um, that's for, you know, the, as, as a hub, of course. Um, definitely, you know, these are three main factors of, of, of the hub. One is the financial offerings, which is the incentives. Uh, the workforce in place, and of course the infrastructure, studio facilities, equipment companies. But there's also other aspects that that these hubs take into consideration and work on. Uh, it's a, some in the industry like to call it film friendliness, which is the general environment that's created for production in the country. Uh, that this includes permitting, uh, customs, processes, um, of course. Oh, so thank you. Um, so, so this is also uh, another aspect to take into consideration. I, you know, I don't want to uh, overlook uh, very important production countries like Lebanon, who I know Jennifer will talk about, and of course, the giant Egypt. Uh, and Egypt, when it comes to international production, is the grandfather in the region. I mean, Egypt hosted, we, we were in a conversation yesterday, Anthony and Cleopatra as an example, uh, many, many decades ago. ago. Um, and in terms of local language content, these two countries are, you know, very important. And, and you know, of course, production companies regionally and internationally have an eye out on for talent, content, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we'll, talk, we'll talk in a while. Uh, about talents with uh, Jennifer, who has uh, a region experience in that. Uh, Rula, uh, you, you're um, a regional producer. You have an international experience. Uh, today, as an Arab producer, what are the challenges you're facing and how do you think uh, these hubs are uh, or will be supporting uh, the regional produ Arab producers? <laughs> That's not right yeah <laughs> difficult question yeah okay i think um, thank you for all those nice initiatives i just wrapped uh, part of the production in neom so i went into the process of shooting i haven't paid her to say anything so whatever she says is completely objective <laughs> <laughs> i think we as uh, local producers that are aiming not to service production to create our content in a conf confusion situation, because there is a lot of initiatives around us. However, the main question, how much we can produce our own content? Now we are servicing a different kind of content from Korea, from India, from all over the place. But the question is, how are those hubs are streaming in what we are doing or as a filmmakers? And this is a question that has a very, very, uh, no answer, I think. <laughs> because there's a, we, we got the support from the Jordan, from uh, uh, Abu Dhabi as well, because I shot in, I shoot in Jordan, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I tried also to Saudi Arabia, even in, in Lebanon. And all those places are facilities, places that they are um, uh, providing services. But what about our original content? And what's happening also in the area or in, in the scene in general, worldwide, it is the platforms. So now we are controlled by the platforms in our contents and our freedom, let's say, space or the, uh, our, our um, um, artistic freedom is more and more limited because the whole system is not giving us the voice yet. You're right. We will we, we also get back to you. I just want to hear your opinion about talents. We spoke about production. We spoke about these, uh, the hubs, regional. Uh, 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 local. Uh, what about the talents? You, you can't do cinema without having the above the line talents. So there are two types of talent. The first talent is, uh, let's say, crew. The second talent is uh, is the actors. And uh, you know, as I have experience in both, I I will talk about both. So um, and I also want to talk about uh, Lebanon. Uh, I think it's very fascinating uh, what is going on, uh, not only in this festival, but <coughs> what is going on around the region. But I also agree with Rula. I, I agree that uh, more and more people are looking for original content, more and more people are looking for uh, like a more cultural content. 
And this is what, I mean, we all aspiring filmmakers here uh, aspire for. Um, and it's great, um, it's great that um, there is more and more meeting today. I mean, I've uh, produced uh, things uh, with Syria, with, uh, with Saudi Arabia last year. Uh, and, and I would say the content is, uh, I mean, when there's time, uh, when there's the right people, the right talent behind the projects, um, the projects uh, are bound to be really interesting. Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, it, it's not so interesting when, uh, when it's still new. Uh, I'll say um, a lot of uh, a lot of the writers, a lot of uh, the producers, are rushing to you know the big glamorous, uh, the, running after uh, you know the the bling. I will say, uh, whereas as writers we have to uh, first and foremost make sure we have time to write authentically um, and naturally uh, to to all the to the region and to you know those the, the attempts at collaborating together um, in terms of uh, in terms of talent and in terms of actors as well I don't know if uh, there are any actors here I am uh, I've been asked a lot of times um, you know, uh, can you speak about uh, the differences between uh, management and uh, and about agency, about... And I would say, I don't know if uh, the hubs at Niam and Al Ula will accommodate for, for acting uh, and casting hubs or management hubs. I think that would be very interesting, especially in KSA here, I understand. Um, more and more, there's more um, focus right now uh, at university, universities on acting programs, acting scholarships, uh, master classes. And I think uh, this is really interesting. This is where it should start. It should start from universities. It should start with, uh, you know, with, uh, maybe importing uh, the experience that the other uh, countries already have. Um, going yes. back to uh, Egypt, Jordan, Beirut. Uh, yeah. And I think there's a lot of uh, talent, and I think we we are seeing today when the talents are meeting, it's it's becoming more and more interesting. We've never we had never before had uh, um, Syrian Lebanese co-productions, and when it happened for uh, the first times, and I would say I witnessed uh, before it got got really big. We did a web series. It was a series for YouTube, and the content was. Really nice. It's a series called Undocumented. I'm not advertising, but it's actually a very interesting series on how you know we could collaborate together. Um, so, so yeah. Again, again it's uh, it's a, we're talking yeah, it's about a question. it's a question. Um, it's a big topic. It's, it's, so it's we a very uh, we have a very large title topic. Uh, Wayne, to I had a question when I came earlier. I I met with a. Um, uh, Lebanese movie director, and he asked. Oh, he told me, "Oh, you had Wayne. You have Wayne Borg on your on your panel." I said, "Yes," and then he told me, "What will happen with the local regional producer? How can we work with Neom? We are small producers all over the region, very talented. Um, how can we benefit from Neom or Film Al Ola?" So this is a practical question. Uh, a lot of people, I guess, that are here uh, in the room uh, would ask. Sure. I think um, in the first instance we've got to stand at the souk, so by all means come over and visit us and we'd be happy to field um, your questions and, and meet with you. Um, you know, we are a facilitator and enabler ultimately and our role is to help support the development of the industry here in the region first and foremost. You know, when I describe us being the regional hub, we are focused on regional content to serve this marketplace which is in essence MENA, Middle East North Africa, a 500 million person marketplace that today is arguably underperforming what it should be because of that fragmentation of infrastructure, that decentralisation of talent and that's what we're trying to address um, right across the value chain and provide that end-to-end -end experience and provide all the key elements that producers need. You know, that world-class infrastructure, the talent pool, 
developing the talent pool, you know, the right incentives, and the right, you know, economic conditions, you know, and, and the right conditions to support the talent that are there, you know, that are going to be based in, in Neil. Uh, and then it's about how do we get out of your way? How do we remove the bureaucracy, you know, which this region is notorious for? How do we provide a red carpet, not red tape experience? And, and that's the beauty we have as a legacy-free environment. You know, we've taken lessons from all over the world in terms of how they do things. And we're starting with a blank piece of paper to say, okay, if you were to do it in the ideal way, how would you structure it? And, you know, we talk about Neon being the city of the future. That's what we're about. It's anticipating what the future's going to be. And that's everything from how our end state media hub is going to look like. You know, we're going to have a media hub that's uh, the equivalent of a million square metres, okay? Uh, we'll have somewhere between 45 and 50 sound stages, gaming studios, industry learning space, tenancy space to aggregate where you know the region's industry to come together to create that critical mass that real vibrant community that creative community to you know to do exactly what you're describing is to bring all these elements together um, and we'll do it in the context of a very progressive you know regulatory and legal framework that is digital first digital focused which again doesn't exist anywhere in the world today and when i talk about a, you know the media hub what will differentiate it is it'll be fully integrated, both physically and technologically. And that doesn't exist today anywhere. So that ability to connect, change workflows, you know, improve productivity, you know, redefine creative processes and help in the storytelling you know, process is what we're focused on. You know, and to create those right conditions you know, for the creative community, for the storytellers, for the producers. And, you know, and provide the right financial, you know, structural, as well as you know, social conditions to do that and to attract the world's best talent and, and with an emphasis on the region. And uh, the question is also uh, yours, Charlene, uh, um, regarding Film Al Ola. If you're a, a local Saudi producer or director or original or Arab, uh, how does he, this person benefit from... Uh, the, uh, the, the support of uh, Film and Honor, how does it work practically? Yeah, I'd say for the local Saudis producers or regional producers in the room, quite often when they contact us, it's the first time they've done that. So the first thing I would initially probably give advice in this room, in that when you are coming with your idea, with your concept, really think about how you present that. Right? So from the first moment you are interacting with us, you're selling your concept, you're selling your idea, and maybe our main focus isn't to fund your idea, but quite often if you really wanted to, we could. Right? So first of all, keep that in mind that we provide services, we provide facilities, but as Wayne said, ultimately we are here to ensure there is a, a thriving industry. So think about use Google, you have Google at, at your advantage. Think about how, if I'm contacting someone that can help me, how do I present that information? Do I get really annoyed on the third email that I send, right? Do you alienate Charlene by saying, oh, I emailed you on Monday and I've sent my script and it's Tuesday and you haven't read it yet, what's going on? These are really sort of basic practical things, but we have to look at our role in the region in terms of how we're supporting big international productions that are established, but also how do we support the 20, 30 something year old who's entering for the first time? Exactly. So the first thing is think about your presentation how you do that and if you don't know about that maybe that's the question you contact in the first instance and say how do i communicate best with you that's a good place to start right then also think about what do you want yeah if you come and say i just need help that's a very big ask and it makes me think you're not being very serious so be really you know practical about what kind of support do you want and also look at what resources are there Saudi, the Middle East generally, and MENA is awash with different opportunities to get support. You have the range of supports from the Red Sea Institute. You also have loads of different um, hubs elsewhere. So get them to support you as well. Once you approach properly, then how we're able to support you is, from a Film Alula perspective, we have, I'd say, a relatively small function at the moment that looks at development. But that's a real focus for us next year. So it is probably a good time to be in content, uh, contact. And we are um, 
working at the moment with a number of international sort of streaming hubs, and we're being really careful about what you mentioned around rights. So we don't want it to be the case that because now the world is interested in non-English content, in local content, in new storytelling, that is just sort of taken away. We want to ensure we're taking that expertise from those big houses and we're getting them to mentor you, but you also have full rights and ownership to your content as well. So in terms of how we're supporting, it isn't necessarily also always the case that that support's gonna be immediately in production. It might be all of the work that needs to happen before that, and that's the infrastructure we're putting in place. And uh, George, your opinion um, regarding, I, I wanted to ask you about uh, um, the workforce uh, that like you have these big regional hubs, um, you have to provide them with workforce. And if you want to produce Arabic content, you need to have this Arabic uh, workforce. Where do you bring it? How do you, how do you proceed in your opinion? How? Well, the shortage of workforce is a global problem now in the screen industry. Um, you know, from what, what, from a public perspective point of view, uh, other than technical schools, uh, workshops and training programs can be uh, instituted. And I think Wayne and said that the, the um, oh, they will have that at New York. Yes, yes, right. and they, okay. you know, they have it in Jordan. They have it in uh, Abu Dhabi also. Um, but, but, but also. Uh, Attracting international production is also a very good way to develop the for workforce because you're having uh, crew, entry-level crew working with top directors and top heads of department, not only from Hollywood, from many other uh, producing countries. Uh, so one services the other. Uh, in, 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 in that sense, but also uh, training programs, tech schools are, are very important. Yeah. Your opinion on that, Rula, according to your experience um, on production, in, in the production field, um, how much uh, training and training this workforce is important to be able to uh, make it work for these regional hubs? Yeah, for sure, it's, it's important. <coughs> and, uh, I've been, I've been managing when I was at the Film Commission because I stopped there also for five years. I was in charge of the capacity, not uh, supporting fi filmmaker support program. And honestly, you can't create a crew in no time. This is its accumulation of experience. We've been now with all the incentives that is happening in Saudi Arabia, in Abu Dhabi, in Jordan. Every time we are accepting at least 20 interns and those interns, we take them from A to Z in different departments. But it does not mean in, in a year, if this intern is uh, trained on two or three production, he will be a head of department. So there's an organic process that, is, that has to be calculated in terms of like how long won't we can be able to build a strong crew. What's happening now with all of that uh, in the area, and now even Abu Dhabi, they have part of the dune. It just the same crew is stretched <laughs> between four countries, okay, and instead of like two. It's the Lebanese, the, the, the Jordanians, the still Saudi we are accepting, and even in Jordan we are getting Saudis interns. But this is a process that will take time, and it's below the line, and from long time we have a problem of above the line. It's not only casting, head of departments. Still, this is something, and I think this is something we need, especially the above the line, we, it will never be created from services. It will be created from the local content because we are the one who can give those opportunity for the people to be head of departments. Any Hollywood film will not, will not be uh, free to have a DOP uh, 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 directing the photography of the film, for example. And we have the... Um we have uh, the quality. We have, like, uh, like, uh, like Jennifer said, we have the talents uh, below and above the line across the region. Uh, she spoke about the Lebanese, but I guess uh, there are other countries like Jordan who have this historical experience and these talents that are uh, uh, anyway traveling for the moment across the region, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, 
I'm, I'm also going to say there's a lot of consist inconsistencies in our uh, in our countries. That's the problem is, you do have uh, you you do have great crew, but then when the country is in is in crisis, all the the talent is going abroad. So uh, again, uh, the idea is um, to if there is this hub, so we're all excited, and I, I think this is a um, it's a it's a hopeful place to uh, to, to start from again. There's after the pan pandemic, it's been uh, really, uh, it's been, um, hard. It, it's been, it's, it's been haunted. So we've been in a freeze. So, um, so the idea is, so you've got this, uh, you've got uh, uh, Egyptians coming to Lebanon, Lebanese going to uh, Egypt, so on, so forth across uh, the countries, uh, and so yeah, one project is not enough to uh, uh, to form a, a crew. So the how, so. Yeah, my, my, my question is, uh, it's, it's great that all these stu studios are coming together, uh, but then, yeah, we'd like to know, like, you know, how, how uh, crews are go going to be formed, how, yeah. uh, if there's going to be a, a really a place for talent to, to I emerge. That's a really critical point, and, and again, with the facilities that we've developed to now, and, and we're going to continue to develop over the course of next year, it's the continuum of work. It's that pipeline of productions, as you say. You can't just have this this volatility and fluctuation of, you know, a one-off feature film and then nothing for six months. You know, we've got a pipeline now that stretches out well into 2024, not just in feature films. I think, you know, it's public knowledge. We, we've, uh, you know, we've locked in uh, Exceptional with NBC. That's 200 episodes per year, you know, at Neil as Soap. Um, you know, that's not only, I think, showing that crews are willing to go up there, but it gives them confidence that there's continuity of work, you know, that they can make the move. And again, we start to consolidate that crew base. And more importantly, young talent who want to get in the industry and, you know, the, tr the various and the plethora of training programs there are. And, you know, we've got programs with the NFTS in London, you know, USC, DigiPen, that they have the confidence to go on those programs. Not only are they going to get attachments, you know, which are now, you know, becoming plentiful, but there's a real career path in, in the future. So, again, you know, that pipeline is critical, that continuity of work, that we maintain that, you know, particularly in regional productions, and then supplement that, as George says, with, with international productions to get that knowledge transfer happening, which is equally vitally important. I, I just want to add also to that, that uh, government institutions can also promote the craft and skill of filmmaking in terms of a viable career path. And this is very important. You know, in Jordan, we worked on that in terms of having job fairs, publicity, because in our region for many years, at least when, you know, when I, I studied film, film was not the go-to uh, career. It was more, you know, doctors, lawyers, and this awareness that this is a viable uh, uh, breadwinning, as we say in, in Arabic, uh, a job is very important, um, and that's you know uh, that is that is in many ways the responsibility of the government entities, the cultural government entities in, in but, the but countries. It's, yeah. it's not just the vocational, the crafts here. It's, it's the professions. You know, exactly. we need you know production accountants. We need IP lawyers. So it's even in the in the professional services, and and not just in the Arab world. You know, my mum and dad never understood what the hell I was doing. You know, except they thought I was just having fun. But it, but it's a serious point. You know, it's seen it, up until now a frivolous career. It's not seen as a serious career, but it's you know it, for the US it's the second largest export industry. And, you know, I think that's what we've got to start to convey here, that you can have a meaningful career, a successful career, uh, you know, financially rewarding in terms of, you know, what you do, um, and you can make a real contribution to, to the society through that as well, as we've seen all around. Film is culture. I could sort of just add to yes, that as well, course. that um, part of that is bridging that gap, because quite often when we talk about film careers or film training, People don't really know what that means from a career perspective. So one of the things that we're doing from sort of January and on onwards is having boot camps, right? So especially where we are having um, or trying to get the interest of people who have an interest in the film but have no sense of what different careers in the films look like, we're having their in-house team from Pinewood Studios in London, their in-house training team, they're coming and doing a series of 10-day um, boot camps where you get access to a whole different range of, I guess, below-the-line careers on set, but also being spoken to about how you, how you behave on the set, how you read a script, 
how you figure out um, if you are in a role, you know, there's a lot of focus on roles in this region around full-time paid for roles. What does it mean to be a freelancer? How, how do you balance that? And then marrying that up with productions that are in the pipeline. So that sort of 10 day experience can actually lead into some real world experience, which as everyone has said, is really where it starts to matter that experience on the ground. So again, looking for where there is almost no bridge there, how do we create those extra initial steps to enable a career to actually be built in film in the long term? Rula, your opinion on that, because I'm going to move back later to the, to the attendees. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's debatable topics, and we all agree that capacity building is very important in the area, and there is a different ways. There is different ways. We need the workshops. We need the training on sets. We need education. We need, we need a lot to be able to serve all those hubs to be operating. Uh, uh, we need to build capacities. And what else? <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing that. It's, it's, we the, are light, it's the lifeblood of trying. the industry. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we live and die by, by the cast and the crews at the end of the day. There is a good enthusiastic people, okay? And enthusiasm is, is, is a good base because without it, like, they will come with, with no fash, uh, passion. And I'm, I'm, I'm shooting in a different places that is, like, out, 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 out of reach. Like, even Niom, I was in Tabuk, I went to Oman before, uh, before that. And we are, we are trying all the time. I think working with a, uh, 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 with a grassroots is very, very important. And there is a great experience. I, 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 I will not mention this because I'm a Jordanian, but we had a, an amazing experience in Jordan, how we worked with the grassroots for a long time to spread the film culture, to have the people uh, working friendly with the films. And we need this movement, I think, along the way. Great. I, I agree. I, I will just, because we have, we have few minutes left, I just want to check if someone has a question in the room so you can benefit from their experience. And yes? Hi everyone, thank you so much for your time today. I was actually interested in the two sides of the conversation and if that could potentially open up uh, opportunities for bigger hubs to have partnerships and retainers with grassroots maybe. Would that be something that would be possible in the future and address some gaps in the when infrastructure. When you say grassroots, I feel like you have something in mind. So what, what are you thinking about specifically? Well, I just mean that in terms of the macro infrastructure that you guys have discussed and that the challenges in terms of uh, resourcing, vocational, and even perceptive problems in the industry, and again, inconsistencies across countries and regions, I feel like that could be addressed by meshing the two together. Um, and it just got me thinking about it in this conversation, so I'm sorry if no, it no, seems half-baked. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say maybe it's a, from a grassroots perspective, I know within sort of my specific team, we have local filmmakers who are part of our team, who are part of decision-making. Um, we ultimately are, are there to serve, in Alula, our communities. So there's a strong focus on what is that relationship, how do we keep it open, how do we work together? So where there are groups, so for example, you know, we all had Guy Ritchie here, um, and then he went to Aluna in the last couple of days. Um, there's lots of things that we could have done, but what we opted to do was to have a round table with local filmmakers, with Guy Ritchie, that rather than maybe do some kind of, you know, you know, sprawled out um, photo shoot in front of, you know, some camera equipment. So in terms of working at a grassroots level, that's really important to us, but it's only, it only works if the grassroots are leading, and sometimes to lead properly, you have to be part of the team, right? So we've made, made it a point to ensure that within our team, we have people that be perceived as grassroots leaders, because they also have their relationships as well. From our perspective, you know, industry learning obviously is critical, as we've described, to, to fuel the future of the, of the industry. So, you know, for example, our program with the National Film and Television School in the UK, we're taking you know, young Saudi youth, school leavers, university leavers, putting them through a blended both residential online course, basic certificate course, to then ground them, get them to start understanding where do they want to specialise, whether it's an editor, you know, focus puller, 
hair and makeup, props, you know, th th that value chain that we talk about, VFX, um, and start to develop those streams of, of, of talent because, you know, we're going to need a very broad base of talent here. For us, it's not just about the physical production, VFX and post. You know, as I said, our offering is, is the full gamut, you know, from, from pre, you know, pre-development right through to, to, you know, virtually distribution. So, you know, it's critical we start to evolve that ecosystem of talent development, you know, and create those, you know, jump off points from schools, from universities. I think to George's point, you know, start to entrench you know, this within the psyche of young people. And we're already seeing that at Neom. You know, we've got two schools at Neom, and we've got about 2,500 people living up there, and they've got a lot of kids. And, you know, we run programs, we take them to the studio, we give them tours, and they get, you know, again, this is where you see the excitement, you know, at that early stage, and, and it's, it's vitally important. Any other question? Hey, how are you guys? Um, Elijah Long. Um, I was listening to you guys speak a lot about crew. I would like to throw out an idea, being an American filmmaker, knowing that there's a lot of crew that they do not have all the opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of shooting going on in Atlanta and all over the city. Um, I'm sorry, and all over the country. However, there is a lot of unemployment. I wanted to know with these thriving film hubs like Alula and Neom that are coming, uh, I'm ashamed that I only thought Neom was the line now that I know that there's a full studio and a whole Way spectrum. Way more than that. <laughs> it, it, exactly. And so what I'm saying is, is that there's a lot of people that don't know that. I know that there are certain visas that can be given that would actually uh, entice people to come move to these different regions that are actually the below the the below the line crew so I just wanted to see if there was um, any ideas of anything in the future that's where you can entice filmmakers who may not be getting the work in 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 America or Europe or wherever to, to come here and, yeah. and help build the community it's a really good point and you know as I described before that knowledge transfer so you know, we're already doing that. We're attracting talent to fill the gaps because, again, how we accelerate and catalyze that ecosystem is vitally important. And, and really, you know, get people exposed in the region to world-class thought leadership and, and where the cutting edge is today. Um, so, you know, that's a, a vital part of our, our offering. And, and, and I think the fact that we're seeing the amount of uh, demand in our facilities, in our locations, you know, to shoot at Neom, and particularly we're getting, you know, repeat business with producers, we're demonstrating, you know, we can deliver, you know, on time, on, on budget, because we've got people from industry for industry. Uh, and, and again, as many people in this room will know, you know, time is money and, you know, problems are money. So the fact that you can be on, on set, on stage, on location with people who know what they do and understand what your needs are um, and then supplement that clearly with, we're pulling crew from all over the world, you know, from the region, Morocco, Egypt, you know, Jordan, UAE because of that pipeline, but further afield out of the UK, out of Europe and, and the US. Next question. Hello everyone, uh, good to see you again. I hey, know most of you and worked or collaborated with, with uh, most of you as well, so my question is friendly. I'm just trying to uh, challenge some of, the, uh, some of the, um, what's in place in the region and get your, uh, again, maybe everyone can benefit from you know, everyone uh, picking your brains. Um, it's, I'm a producer working on local international projects from independent grassroots to uh, big international streamers over the past 10 years and it seems to me and I think a lot of producers in the region that a lot of things are in place. Um, Roda has been raising generations of crews that are now able and can take on any projects. Uh, you guys at Aloda and Neom are definitely doing gigantic facilities to accommodate anything the mind can imagine. George has handled a lot of maybe the first big top Hollywood movies to show it in Jordan. Uh, Jennifer worked on an Oscar-nominated film that went to Cannes and the big Lebanese um, export from two years ago with the Lebeke film. So, and the money is there and the infrastructure seems to be underway. My question as a producer distributor is don't you uh, think there is a market issue where in the end 
if we have all of that structure in place and the trickle-down effect can happen, maybe the problem is at the top, and by that I mean the main budgets and the commissioners, which are lacking demand, in the sense that just we mentioned the inconsistency of having one big project and then silence for three years, or one huge ambitious show and then uh, silence for three years. Would NBC today and Netflix being the main commissioners and we're paying all of us, all of you, for everything, because this is how the economy and the industry will flow, um, is that enough to sustain and trigger that entire cycle, that virtuous cycle? Uh, don't you guys think that we need more commissions, more projects being asked? Potentially, film and cinema is, we like to compare it to online, so if you see what happened on YouTube and TikTok over the past five years, it was very fast because there was a clear demand. Saudi is the highest consumer per capita of YouTube in the world. YouTube was there two years later, opened offices, invested in content, invested in educating their online creators and their YouTube creators. Uh, that could be easily replicated in the film and TV space. Isn't the problem then at the top for actual dollars to trickle down and feed all of those machines? Could I maybe sort of step in first and be the first person to go with your, with your question? <laughs> I think the first thing is to sort of look around you in this room and, keep, and like bear in mind that this is the second Red Sea Film Festival and how large it is. And it would make me sort of question um, the virtuous circle in the context of Saudi, right? Where we're looking at the opening of the market within the last two and a half years and probably what you've seen is a complete acceleration forward, right? So I guess if I'm speaking specifically about this market, that's what I would say. Now, with regards to something Wayne said earlier, is that we have specifically here a blank sheet of paper whereby we can learn from the pains and the gains of other places in the region. And I think we've been speaking a lot about Saudi specifically, but I know that within the next couple of weeks I'm going to be in Jordan and spending time with the Jordanian Film Commission, and actually I've always been really interested um, in what's happened regionally, not just because of what's gone really well, but also what do we need to avoid so we are making the right decisions at the top properly and we are investing properly. So I'd sort of, not caution, I would, I'm incredibly optimistic. Right, so I would say from a perspective here now at Red Sea in Saudi, I think in terms of development, we blow out of the water um, YouTube in terms of what YouTube has done over the last 10, 15 years. If you look at what's been achieved globally, infrastructure perspective, people being able to feel confident about how they move forward, we probably should be the example to YouTube in terms of how do you do things quickly in a short period of time? What the challenge is for us is how do we sustain that? How do we make sure it isn't a sort of puff in the, you know, puff in the air and then two years from now we have an empty room or we have a despondent room because all the money's been spent and there's nothing to show for it? I've got a different proposition to you. It's not about a problem, it's the opportunity what the streamers have demonstrated over the last sort of five years is you're not dealing no, in a regional market anymore. You're dealing in a global marketplace. And, you know, the Korean model example is clearly, uh, you know, a great proof of that, that foreign content is no longer a barrier to success. If you've got a great story and you tell it well, you have a global marketplace. You know, culture, foreign language, means you can have success globally at scale. You're no longer, you know, going to an art house cinema to watch something where you can't watch the picture and read the subtitles at the same time. The, the generations that are coming now, we've broken through that barrier. We, that's been disrupted. So that means you're not now dealing with MENA. You have billions of people as your marketplace. Now, the deal you strike with the streamers, that's another discussion. That's the problem. Um, and that's the challenge. But, you know, and, and we're seeing it by the virtue of the fact you have, you know, Netflix here, Amazon Prime are, you know, fishing around, Apple, if, you know, we, we know these guys are coming. We're having those conversations because they recognise, one, they need to serve the regional market, the local language marketplaces, but also they now appreciate that 
content will travel. And, and great stories will always find an audience. And this region has a huge benefit and luxury of having storytelling in its DNA. And we shouldn't lose sight of that fact, that you are now dealing in a global plate. You are competing against the Indians. You're competing against the Koreans. Now, the Korean success of Parasite and more frequently, you know, recently Squid Games, that was a culmination of a 20-year journey. You know, when the, when the Korean government decided to focus on the creative industries, that culminated in that success. And I think that's the opportunity here for everybody in this room, for all of us, is how do we compete on a global scale? How do we get that critical mass of talent, of storytelling, to, and do it at a world-class standard? And that's the other piece. How do we do it? You know, do it well. That's how you compete. Unfortunately, we have to stop. No more time. <laughs> so if you want to, um, you have extra questions, you can meet our panelists uh, back in five minutes, right? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you to, uh, to this prestigious panel. Uh, thank, thank you, you to everyone of you.